We are going to review some basic topics of univariate statistics that you have or should have learnt about earlier. First, I'm going to put some ideas in context for you by explaining the relationship between statistics and variability. After all, the word univariate has a word stem in it that implies the topic is all about variability. We need statistics to try answer the question, what happened, using data. Other branches of science and engineering focus on questions such as what if, or what's best. Let's take a look at this plot. There's no variability here, and there's nothing to explain. The only thing that happened is that the process was operating consistently at a level of 1680 for the last 500 samples. It's not very interesting, but it is a good process. We would like to produce product like that all the time. Your job as an engineer mostly exists because there is variation. For example, take the objective of producing wooden boards that we saw in the previous video on box plots. The boards need to be of the same thickness of 1680 every time. That never happens in practice. Each board is slightly different. They have variation. In the module on process monitoring that we will get to, we will be able to prove this numerically, but for now, this plot shows that the data are actually good. They are from normal operating conditions. It's not a flat line. There is variability. Now, something that you're more likely to see in practice is this, where there are drifts and changes. For example, at point 400, a feedback controller notices the drift away from the target of 1680 and starts to move the process back again by point 425. There's also a slow downward trend all the way from point 100 to 400. There is natural drift and movement in the process. It happens in all systems. Equipment goes out of alignment, catalysts become less efficient, dirt and fouling set in, roads and buildings crack and break, and so on. The only difference is the length of the time scales involved in each of those processes. These are classic examples of the second law of thermodynamics at work. And here's another example of real variability. There's a period of time when the machine was shut down, the sensor was broken, we see spikes, there's drifts. All of these things are common in real processes. Although normal, you can appreciate why variability is problematic. At the end of your production line, you have customers. Your customers are expecting a product that is identical every time. They are expecting your process to operate like this. At the same time, your customers also want to pay as little as possible for your product. If your competitor can make the same product for less money, you will go out of business eventually. So we have these competing constraints, meeting customer expectations and keeping the cost of the product low. Variability in any system works against you on both these aspects. Let's see. Firstly, high variability means your customer cannot use your product. Think what happens if you received boards that were too thin. The board could be totally unusable. Secondly, it increases customer costs. If your board is too thick, your customer can perhaps sand it down to make it thinner, but they have to put in extra work, and that increases their cost. Thirdly, selling product with variability will impact your reputation. You will become known as the unreliable supplier, and eventually that will lead to business losses. Finally, any variability that you have costs you money. You have to spend money to counteract variability, to aim for that desirable flat line. This means you have to manually inspect and measure every product before you sell it. But in a high volume production environment, this is not practical or extremely expensive. If you know you have low variability, you can safely send the product on to customers with minimal inspection. Also, let's say you discover unacceptable variation from inspection. Now you have to counteract that by spending more money on your side to fix the problem before you ship the product. You might not even be able to fix the problem, and so you have to scrap the product and pay to dispose of it. Now, as an engineer, you will see a potential solution to this problem. Apply feedback control, detect a deviation from the target, and adjust the process to counteract the deviation. Let's take a look at this visually. 
the diagram shows how variability moves from the incoming material out to your final product without feedback control. All that variability simply moves through the process and shows up in your product. With feedback control now, we can achieve much less variation in the final product. Feedback is interesting. It actually adds variation into a process. That's unusual. We add artificial variation into a process to counteract the variability from the incoming material, to cancel it out. But that feedback still costs us money and energy. We have to put that into the system and that increases the price of the product. The visualization videos that you learned from in the prior module were all about visualizing variability. In this coming module, we're going to learn how to quantify variability and detect whether there has been an actual change in variability.